Family and friends, welcome to the Work Nation, our nation of factual truth, where we feel free to share knowledge and spread the knowledge of factual truth without fear, without favor, and without faith. Where we encourage us to live our life and live it well through the knowledge of factual truth. Because it's very important, it's our life. Okay, I'm sharing with us what I titled, I have a testimony. I have a testimony. You know, there is power of testimony, which is why the preachers, as the like the court leaders, religious leaders, you know, they use testimonies to get people. Why do they use testimony? Because testimony is powerful in such a way that with testimony you can persuade people to believe what in their in their in, in their real mind. Or if they are saying they will not accept, so they be persuaded. That's why it's called lying testimony. So they made up things, they tell lies, remove certain things, don't show you that is by their effort that thing actually happened. And they, they spiritualize it, telling you it was by the grace of God or by the grace of Indians or ancestors or that, or by the help of some angels or imaginary beings, you know beings that don't actually exist. Mm. <laughs> You're welcome. So, 
with testimony, especially the lying testimony, the gullible crowd, the people are persuaded. They see the ministers using it, and you see those gullible people yelling, Amen, right on, man of God, yeah. There is, who said there is no God? So even incident that happen to them, that is a normal thing that happens. If you are not in harm's way, you will escape such accident or something like that. The, the people see it as, oh, it, it shows the hand of God. I, one of my friends on Facebook shared a video where several vehicles got burnt. Then this one stupid idiot brought out the Bible from one of the cars. Say, see, the Bible did not burn, although part of the Bible burned. But they don't know that because of the volume of the Bible, if you leave it longer, the fire will burn it. But if not, it will be hard because of the volume. They don't know that. So he held it as evidence that this is the word of God. It means the word of God because fire did not burn it. Idiot. If you touch that car very well, there are other parts of that car fire did not touch them before they quench it. If they left the fire without quenching it, it will consume everything. The houses that got burnt, everything got burnt. The Bible there was not saved. But these idiots, they always look for something to, 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 uh, to support their illusion, to support their delusion and their hallucination because they're mentally ill. So you see, you, people, cars, as, uh, cars cost like, will I say, a million times than that Bible. And the Bible you are calling your word of God is made in China. Made in China, a book printed by atheists. And is sold to you as a book, as a work of fiction. But you now believe is holy word of God, just as uh, olive oil has become holy anointed oil. Ordinary water we we drink, we used to bed, we used to wash, has become holy water. Stupid people everywhere. So with testimony, you persuade people to believe what they don't know, to believe what they don't understand, to believe that there is God, there is Jesus, there is miracle. I still have hope. It will work for me. If you work for that person, it will work for me. I will keep praying. I will keep believing. Then the second thing, it persuade them, it convince them. They use testimony to convince people. You see the testimony of that person? God, that's why the pastors always go to their members who survive accident or survive sickness or disease, he asked them to come for Thanksgiving service. It's in that Thanksgiving service sometimes they will call the person, come and testify to the goodness of the Lord, what the Lord has done for you. He come, brethren, men and brethren, hey, this God, how can I thank this God enough? Who said there is no God? That person must be a fool. Brethren, I was traveling. We had accident. Many people die, and one of the best people that survive, praise the Lord. That's nonsense. The God, God supposed to prevent that accident if there is God. You're not supposed to even travel with car or in a public transportation if your God is real. The spirit of your God is supposed to take you from wherever you, you are to wherever you're going. That's what shows miracle. Entering public trans transportation or going, living the same way everybody's living, there's nothing miracle about it. Not a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's not a miracle. That the impact did not get to you does not mean you are protected. Oh, because of the chaplet you are wearing, or because of the anointing you are anointed your head with, or because of the emblem you have, because of the handkerchief you have, because of the apron you have, because of the bullshit you have. And these some people will be against people they say they are ritualists. You are a ritualist. When you wear chaplet, when you wear scapula, when you wear get a white handkerchief as a miracle, when you carry Bible, you are a ritualist. That's why you believe God sacrificed his son. You are a ritualist. <laughs> but you know, people that are not in their own circle, they condemn those ones. But they all they approve. No, you are. Because they're ignorant of like what witchcraft is, they think it's evil. So if you're not following, if you're not in their circle, you are practicing witchcraft. Witchcraft is somebody robbing you your sleep. That time you spend doing night vigil, that's witchcraft. Even then, you are praying. 
for God to fight, for God to kill, for you know, for your enemies to die. That's witchcraft. <laughs> Although witchcraft is not bad, but you have been convinced to believe it's bad. But that's actually what you are doing. When you say, let us pray, that's witchcraft. You pray for something to happen, something you don't have power to do, but you pray it happen. That's witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> so they persuade them, they convince them. Then when they are persuaded and convinced, what happens? They get converted. And it is hard for you to revert someone who has been converted, which is what all of us suffered before we say we are awakened. And many of us are still struggling with it because part of that conversion still, or the particles of it still remain with us. Especially in words like love, hope, faith, some of us say, no, no faith, but you stay you still uh, acknowledging love and the hope and trying to make it be, oh, love is caring. Love is not caring. Love is hate in disguise. Love is of God. God is love. And God is evil. Love is evil. That's why somebody that say they love you, they end up betraying you. Somebody that say they love you, they end up hurting you. Somebody that say they love you, they end up killing you. And if you are the one that falls for love, you see how much you have been suffering and you will suffer. And if you don't wake up now, you will die in the name of love. Imagine people that say they are not religious. Oh, I'm not religious anymore. 14 February is coming. They will celebrate Valentine. And they say they are not religious. I'm awake. I'm woke. I know. I don't religion. No, religion. No, but, but you will celebrate Valentine, right? From 14 February. Let's watch and see. I will see your post. <laughs> You celebrating Valentine, I unfriend you. Because it's bullshit. It's religious bullshit. It's like Christmas. It's like Easter. It's the same bullshit. Religious bullshit. So when they use this testimony, they know the weapon of it. It's like when they use the music. That's to prepare your heart, as they used to say it. To prepare you to be open, to surrender yourself including your wallet, because you have been mesmerized. You are like, now, oh, 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 I feel like I'm in heaven. Take everything, Lord. Take everything. Man of God also, empty my pocket. Take, take. The Lord is good. They take your brain and begin to rob you. Because if your brain is entered, they will not rob you. I have a testimony. Something happened Wednesday, so it's one week today. I don't know why. I thought I'll be sharing it. I've done like, I think, two videos since then, but it never occurred. I say maybe it's because I will share it as a message, you know, to show our people what happens. Uh, if you are waking, you find that those things you used to say is divine something, spiritual something, you hear them voices speaking to you, telling you what to do, it's still happening. It's a natural thing. The people spiritualize it. So, Wednesday, I decided to go and renew my Nigerian passport because I am coming to Nigeria this year. You know, I always say when I'm going, I'm not afraid of what will happen or what anyone can do. You know me. So, uh, and when I'm on, on the go, uh, you see me anywhere. The flight stop. I make the, I make the, I take pictures. I make the post. I share it. Everybody know. I'm not scared. Yeah, today Tuesday. So Wednesday last week. There's one week today. So, so Wednesday last week, which is um, February second, right? Yeah, February second. So. You know, when we I used to go to New York, we have to go to New York to renew or to get our passport, which is ridiculous. I said, these people, why are they not improving? They always going backward, going backward. Anything in Nigeria is not improving. Before we used to go and wait, maybe if you go in the morning, submit to your documents and information, they ask you if you can come back 2 p.m., you can pick it up. Okay, we maybe you hang around in New York and they come back and pick it up. Now they say, no, you can't pick it up the same day anymore. After paying online, you still have to pay when you get there. Then you go with a prepaid priority envelope. U UPS, uh, uh, that's a um, um, post office envelope. You pay for it. Oh. You are the one that will pay for it. And you will address it to yourself. Then you give it to them. So when the passport is released, they put it and mail it to you. 
it's all on your head. America is not like that. <laughs> America. And this is Nigeria embassy in America. So I say, you know, I used to catch train to go there because driving to New York is crazy. Not only the traffic, the tolls, and when you get there, where to park. So I hate going to New York. Unless if it's to go catch fun. But going to New York, especially going to Nigeria Embassy, I hate going there. So I was planning out to go with the train, blah, blah. So that one, I set my alarm to wake me up 6 a.m. so that I can catch train and be there. They said they're opening 10 a.m. I want to be there on time. Or maybe if there is line, I will not be at the back like that. So but when I wake up, I say, wait a minute, you know. Why am I struggling, still struggling, like trying to catch train to go, blah, blah, when there is Uber. So I was planning to take Uber from my house in East Orange to um, work at Penn Station, which would be maybe like $10 or $15, something like that. So what do you mean? I can take Uber to New York. So I went to my phone, Uber, I put my, where I'm going to New York. It showed me like, I think 50 something dollar, of, I think $49, let me say $50. I said, okay, but it's like four people in the car. I said, okay, it's not bad. Then I freshen up. So I say I will take Uber. And so I waited for some time. I said, maybe from seven, I will put it for seven so that I don't have to rush. I know I'm taking Uber. Okay. And one of the things that pushed me actually to take Uber, I said, why will I be suffering? I, I, I have the money. I'm, I'm suffering. But I will send money to somebody or some people in Nigeria who... Don't, who are not the owner of that money, but myself, who are making that money, I'm not enjoying it. This is what money, most of us in abroad are passing through, but they don't share it. Though some of them will tell you how we are, so it's not like that, especially when something happens. But they, we're supposed to mean it. You're supposed to mean it. If you are making money, be first person to enjoy it. Don't care about what they will say because they do not give you money to keep unless your family raise money to send you abroad or say they allow to send you abroad, you have to reciprocate, okay? Or reciprocate. You have to give back to them. But if they didn't do all these things, no, live your life. Whoever you want to give, feel free to give. Don't let anybody compare you. you it's not a must you give. Anybody that say you must give, tell that person to give. Why is he asking you to give? Let him give. And they say, God bless you to bless others. No, let God bless all of us. If God created all of us, why should he bless someone to bless? He did not create you to create someone else. No, he did not. You were born. That's how it is. You are born to burn others. So if God is the one blessing people, that's, that's corruption. A God that can bless some people and not bless all the people he, he made, that God is a corrupt God. And that's what happened wherever you see corruption. That's where you see the poor and the rich. The reason why we have the poor and the rich is not because the poor are lazy. No, it's because of corruption. Okay. So, then around 7 o'clock, I put Uber again. Guess what? It's now $90. Ooh. You know, from $50 to $90, extra $40. But it's only me in the car. I say it's good, of course. I was on my phone. All the posts I made that on Wednesday morning, I was inside the car, you know, making the post, you know, inside the Uber, making the post, going to New York, enjoying no more going through the train. I have to take the a subway card, you know, pay. I don't want to miss that. Sometimes you miss a place, you go catch a train, maybe depends on where you go. So if I'm going through um, um, World Trade Center, you know, I have to walk like five minutes to catch the other train that go to Central, uh, Grand Central. Then uh, if I'm going through um, Penn Station, there's New York Penn Station to New York Penn Station. You know, when you stop there, you catch a train or also, you know, many things you have to be going through rushing. And when you come down, you'll be walking. You trek some, some of them, you trek 30 minutes to Nigeria Embassy. Or the one, I choose the one that you will trek about uh, six minutes. Yeah, but I choose Uber. Uber dropped me by the... Uh, by, by the embassy there. So I paid that $90 to go. 
And so when I was coming back, I was ready also to take Uber, but I found that the the um, Lexington Avenue train station is close to the embassy. They say just two blocks there. So I walk down there. Then I, I pay like two dollars something to a train to well, um, uh, what did they uh, uh, square right? Yeah, that's how they call it. Times Square to go to Times Square. So when I get to Times Square, I so the lady I asked direction. He said, "Are you taking the Pat train or the New Jersey Transit?" I said, "I'm taking New Jersey Transit because that's the one more expensive." And you know you relax. Uh, the the part train make look up, and you see many people there because it's cheap. Okay, so I said no, I'm taking New Jersey Transit. Okay, so when I enter New Jersey Transit, I don't have their card, but I know you can pay all that. So I was sitting, I'm ready. So I dress well as you know I was going to embassy. So I dress well. So. When the time to pay the the conductor that is collecting uh, the the ticket or the fare, so when it comes to me, I say, oh, I don't have card. I reach out and get my wallet. Open my wallet. If you open my wallet, you see the money inside, right? So I say, no, I don't have money. So he say, where are you going? I say, I'm going to Orange. So he say, okay, that's two stop. Okay, so he's coming back to collect the money. I say, okay. I sit down with my phone again. Then. The guy did not show up. We get to um, uh, Broad Street. That's where the train stopped for me to catch the other train to Orange, uh, East Orange and all that. I live in East Orange. Okay, so the guy did not come for the money. We came down out of the plane. So I was asking, where do I catch the other train? And the guy was the one directing me where to go. He did not ask me for the money. <laughs> I said, okay. He directed me, I said, see, maybe he left me. Okay, I waited for the other train. He asked me to where to actually go and catch the train. I said, okay, I went there. Then the other train came, I entered. That one going to Orange, East Orange. So as we are going, the same thing, another conductor, that is not that because another train now, so it's, this is another conductor. He approached me for my fare. I said, okay, I brought my wallet again, I want to pay. He said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to uh, Orange. He said, don't mind about that, but never mind. <laughs> he didn't collect money from me. Now, he get to East Orange, uh, so I know this is my, it's close to where I live, so I will just stop here and walk down to my house. Okay, he get to East Orange, I stop. I say, thank you. I walk out and walk back to my house. You see the miracle? It's a big testimony to me because I paid ninety dollar to go to New York, but I came down. I came back, only paid two dollar, and that two dollar something I paid was a card somebody gave to me, not from my pocket, because the person went, my coworker that went is a Nigerian that went last time, so he still have a card. The money is inside, so the only money taken from that is card was two dollar fifty cents or two dollar eight. That's the the, the the train from Lexington Avenue to Times Square. That's only that, but I did not pay anything from New York to New Jersey, which I paid $90 going, but when I, 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 I came back, I did not pay anything. So since that time, I was saying, this is what people say that miracle, you know, God, imagine if it's in the church, I share this. Imagine how pastor will use it to raise money how they will use it to tell people this is the hand of God. And they will begin to tell people nonsense. I see God in your next street. God will do this. God will do that. You have to tap into this grace. You have to tap into this anointing with a seed. They use it to exploit. I used to do that also. But I want to show us when people are saying they have testimony, don't just believe it. Listen to the details. You'll find out it is not any the Lord's doing. It is not God's doing. It's not angels doing. Oh, that conductor was an angel sent by God. You know, or God blind their eyes. They forget it. No, 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 no. 
if had it been I was lying to that's my first thing I thought had it been he saw me, you know, maybe I said that somebody that wants to beat them like I don't have money or I don't want to pay. No, I got my wallet, you see how I dress, okay, I'm ready to pay. At least and I also have my apple just <laughs> today. So if you look at me, I'm not a hungry person. Even my wristwatch will show you, no, I can pay. It has nothing to do with any God, any grace of God, any glory of God, any mercy of God. No. Human being can look at you and decided to not take something from you. Even thieves, criminals do the same thing. Sometimes they go to rob, they see certain people, they say, let me leave. It's not because you are anointed. It's not because God is with you. I know my younger brother, Casey, he don't know this. Maybe if he listen to this video, this is the first time he will hear it from me. Among all my siblings, he's the one. Anytime I look at him, there is this type of mercy, or I always see him as somebody that, that's how I see him, and I always want to do something for him. He's my living, call him Casey. You can see him on my friend list. He's my younger brother. I have been helping him right from uh, I'm the firstborn. So I was uh, when he was born, I went to hospital also. When he was, I was carrying him also. But as we are growing, anytime I see that guy, I see, you know, when you see somebody like special somebody or somebody, you know, you don't want that person to suffer. That's always how I see him. Not that I don't care about other my siblings, but I care for all my siblings. But that guy, and it, I say, it's now I say, that thing is bullshit. <laughs> but this is natural things. There are sometimes, you know, you're carrying loads. Somebody just sees, so, so, so other people see, they don't care. It's not because they know that there is something. Somebody may see you in the situation he has been in before, then he don't want you to go through that alone. He say, let me help you. That doesn't mean it is God or it is angel. Now you begin to thank God. No, thank the person. Appreciate the person, not God. I don't have to go to any church for that. It was Wednesday. I did been I was a religious person. It's a midweek service. That's an opportunity for me to go to church and testify. No. Every testimony you hear in the church is a lie. And they were de de designed to persuade you, convince you, and convert you. And once you are com persuaded, convinced, and, and converted, you are a sheep. You follow whatever they say. You do whatever they say. You lose your mind. And that's why I keep encouraging our people, stop spiritualizing what you don't understand or what you don't have knowledge of why it happened. Because you don't understand it does not mean it is divine or it is spiritual anything. And when you're talking about divine, I just made that post, I said to air is divine. You're talking about imagination. People that air, people that do wrong things against you, they imagine it before they do that. It was not by accident. So you forgiving them is encouraging injustice. That's why I say to forgive is injustice. And it's true. That's why the forgiveness is for slaves. Fairness is for free men. You'll be fair. The way they come to you, that's where you go to them. Stop socializing things. You don't know how it happened or why it happened. Shouldn't make you to be a sheep. Following whatever whatever interpretation anybody give to it, you believe. They say that it's like when you are sick. If you don't know why you are sick, and if you don't know how to treat that sickness, you will become a victim to all the people coming. Even people that don't know how things is there. Yeah. One man take that medicine and walk. Take it. Some of them will even come with some. Take it, take it. Even when you smell it, your body is telling you don't take it. They say, take it. If you take it, you take it. You get worse. There is no spiritual anything anywhere. Your problem is not spiritual. Your battle is not spiritual. Your circumstance is not spiritual. Your condition is not spiritual. 
There is nothing spiritual anywhere, nothing. Everything that happens, everything about us, they are natural things calling for our what? Research and understanding or having knowledge. That's what they are calling us for. Anyone that tell you what you don't know is higher than you is a stupid person. What you don't know is calling for you to research and to know. And that's why believers are suffering because they are worshiping what they don't know. What they don't understand, they believe. That's why they are suffering. What you don't understand, what you don't know is calling for you to know, to understand. And how can you start understand when you don't do your own research? How can you know when you don't do your own research? You have to wake up and do your own research so you can know and understand. That's how you gain wisdom. When you know how things work and you do it, that's what is called wisdom. If we are involved in that thing, it is natural, not spiritual. Anything human being is involved in doing, whether as a native doctor, as a medical doctor, whatever it is you are doing, you say it's a spiritual thing. No, it's a natural thing. We all can know how this thing goes. It is when you spiritual things, you spiritualize things, you begin to believe no one knows tomorrow. That's nonsense. And that's what has been crippling our people, Africans. We are living our life in ignorance, believing that nobody knows tomorrow. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Who said that? There are people among us equipped with that ability naturally to know what will happen tomorrow. They don't need to go through the process to know. It is called prescience. These people can know something is about to happen. They will tell you this thing will happen. It will happen. It's not spiritual anything. It's not a gift from our ancestors. It's not a gift from any nature. It's, not, it's a natural thing about us. That's why you have dreams, revelations, visions. It's all part of us. There is no force higher than nature. There's no spiritual world anywhere. This is our world. That's why I want to share something with us, things that hinders us. Things that hinders us. It hinders our development as a people. Some of you, you know where you were born, your neighborhood, where you grew up. If you go there today, it's still the same way. For example, I grew up in Fege. I was born in my village, Ibubumuchu, but I, I, I grew up in Fege, Onesha. If you go to Fego today, no development. All you, all you have is big houses. People are building big houses. Big houses. That's what we call development. Bad road. No power, no steady power supply. No, nothing, not now. No development as a people. This, this is the place every four, four years or every, they're having an election. Electing people to serve them. These people they are electing are traveling abroad, seeing what wonder thing, wonderful things are happening. Only send their own children to abroad. Then the suffering continues there. And when they come back, they buy big, big, big cars. The, the bad road doesn't affect them. They sit at the back, driver driving. Their car is a big car, so they don't feel that the, 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 the you know, the dance, we, we dance inside the car. We, 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 bad road. <laughs> Bad road that even the pregnant one is uh, afraid of having miscarriage because of bad road. Boom, 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 boom. Bad road. You drive your car in a Nigerian road, that's it, that car is gone. Mess up just because of bad road. No development. This is why we don't have development. And you see us struggling. Make I want to make money and show people I have made money. That's our development. You see the African Cup of Nations that just ended. 
in the midst of Omicron and all that. Africans are not developing any vaccine, you know, but soccer. We, they, they can kill themselves for that. Competing, showing the world we can we can do great in soccer. How about science? Somebody says soccer is what just giving us making us happy now. No, this is not something new. When I was growing up, we weren't supporting English Premier League. Although it was it is, before it were people that play pool that talk about Manchester, Liverpool, you know, English Premier League. No, our set we we concern about the local team. You know, at that time, I was supporting uh, Morningstar. Oh, morning! Anytime Morningstar play, I think one of the what is the name of the one of that their star player is it Akede? I want them to win. Then when it comes to Nigeria, I was supporting Rangers International. Who? No matter. And the, in that time, in, in those days, it's black and white TV now. So any anything that we are white, we call it Rangers. <laughs> Chris and white, you always we look at it. Now we grow up, we don't support look at it anymore. No, no African support look at it for what? I say Africans, can't you learn? You're supposed to be like African Cup of Nations, supposed to be African players in Africa, not professional players. No, African players in Africa to show that's how we can build. But you want to be like them. Why, when it comes to science, you are not like them? When it comes to medicine, you are not like them. When it comes to other things that we make life better for everyone in your in your land, is you are not like them. I live and living in America. See what we are still going through to get our passport in America. In America, now you know what people go through in Nigeria to get it. But the only thing good if it's in Nigeria, and you can stay here, pay you can pay money and get it. That's one one of the things I like about corruption in Nigeria. <laughs> if you have money, you will get whatever you want. You know you will not struggle like that. My daughter just got her American passport. She did not go through all this bullshit. She just went to post office. She went to post office. That's why I also got my American passport. She went to post office. She filled the information they need. Da, da, da. They tell her when to come to collect it. She, you know, I, I think they mail it too. She got it. Not going through pay, brain prepay, those things, blah, 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 bullshit. So I'm waiting for them to send me my passport before my date of because my 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 present passport will expire in June, and I'm going to Nigeria in July. So I hope it will come before that time. Okay, if it don't come, then I reschedule. It's a, it's not a big deal. It's spiritualizing things that make us respecting the dead and not respecting the living. The way we respect the dead shows that we don't even, you know, care about the living. You see, in a family where people are struggling, somebody dies, then they have to sell the land for befitting the... What nonsense. I made a post last time. Why are we using coffin, casket, to bury the dead? Dead body. This dead body is, is useless. So the living body is not useless. All the dead body need is to deposit it back to where it belongs, to the earth. So why are you dressing it up? Why are you spending all that to put it back to the earth? It becomes a big thing. And one of, my, one, of our, uh, uh, one of us commented there how they fine him for not using expensive or good quality coffin to bury his father. Nonsense people are going through. In some places, when somebody dies, you know, everything seems to cease. It's no longer... I remember in those days when our people, when, when somebody dies, you don't tell women like that. Especially like when their father or their mother dies. They we tell the husband. So the husband will trick her, say, oh, let us go to village. Oh, I want to go and do so, so thing. Then when she's coming, when they enter the village, they say, he said, what happened? Yeah, our father is there. Boom, you see, her. Oh, my God. it's because we are ignorant of death. They make us live in fear of death. Fear of death. We don't want to die. <laughs> death is a battle. No, it's not. It's because we are ignorant. 
That's why we are honoring the dead. We're not supposed to honor the dead. We're supposed to honor the living. We are ever living. Death is not the end. It's transformation. So it's something we're supposed to be look uh, long for. Not be afraid of. Think about it. Why are we honoring the dead? Unlike the way we treat or we honor the living. The living we honor is maybe the one that is rich. And we're honoring them for them to favor us. For them to share us with, to give us connection. Or to at least let something drop. But when we see the poor, we treat them. We treat the dead better than the poor. Another thing that hinders our development as a people is honoring our oppressors and oppression. Something that oppresses us, we are honoring it. People that oppress that that oppresses us, we are honoring them. These things hinders our development as a people. It is time we begin to call a spade a spade. Rise up. If there is election in your land or elected officials who are serving as president, governors, uh, other political pos uh, position they are occupying, even the king of your town, if they are not serving your people, if they are not serving the town, then why are you keeping moot? Why are you shutting up? Because you are religious, because you are spiritual. You believe if they are wrong, God will deal with them. If they are wrong, their ancestors will deal with them. No, we are the ones that will deal with them. But do we have the nerve to do that? When we have division among us, we are fighting. Now, your English is not correct. Your English, that's what we're fighting for. You are not supporting this person. You're not, you're not, that's what you're fighting for. Why we are suffering. It ran like this, erosion come and wipe out everything because we are not we are not even prepared. Uh, we have educated people who, which is their work to treat such thing, but it's not happening. The places we have bad road, running season come and mess it up. That's how it's gonna be. Then they will one individual bring the money, bring money, let us fix it up. But there are people you elected. There's no reason for you to ask people that are making struggling or hustling to make money to contribute to the development of their town. It shows that you people are going backward. That is the duty of the politicians, those you elected. But they see you are stupid. You elected them to be worshiping them. And anybody, anybody that comes to say what they're doing, they're not doing what they're supposed to do. You say you are envious, you are jealous of them. Then you come fighting for them. Another thing that, they, that hinders our development in Africa, comparison. Comparison. And what we compare ourselves to Americans or Europe is silly things, not in the things that matters, as I said earlier. We went to celebrities. <laughs> people are saying celebrities. These people, they have a system that work for the citizens, at least. 50%. But there's no, no, no system in Africa that is working for any citizen of any country, even for 1%. It, it, it does not exist. In Africa, every system is better only those that are connected. Those that are among the you know, politicians, they are the ones the system working for. But the poor masses, that's why you see them in the churches, in the mosques. In the shrine, because they want something to happen, something a miracle, something will happen. When you are comparing yourself with others, it rob your joy. You will never be happy with yourself anymore. You will think your own case is worse. You think, and when you see them, you shrink yourself. You are not yourself. You think because they have money, they are better than you. No. I have since my I never see I never see myself, you know, lowering myself to somebody because of what they have, because I have that in me that anything anyone anyone have if I want to have it I have to do whatever they do they did.
to have it and that we get it. Nothing. So why should I bow before them? I say maybe maybe that's why they name me Shadrach. I'm not bowing before any image. <laughs> I'm not bowing before anyone. But it is a natural thing. And many of you listening to me, you have this ability in you also. But you say, let us go with the flow. That is what is in vogue now. You know, let us, no, no. That's why I am calling us to wake up. When you compare, comp when, you, when, you, when you compare yourself, you begin to co conform. You begin to comply, you know, to, okay, this is what, uh, what is happening. Let me go. You see that stupid idiot that says he's taking people to water to wash them so that they will go and make it. Some of those boys standing there, they don't know anything about life. All they want, okay, let me do it. I want money too. I want to make money. Because when I make money, I will have any type of woman I want. I will buy any type of car I want. I will build a house. That's it. That's all they know. And they're just standing there. They're confused also. Comparison is the thief of joy. It will make you begin to conform contrary to your person. Insulting even your own intelligence. And you see you living a life that is not yours. As I said yesterday, you will not be living your real life. The fourth one is what I already said about spiritualizing things. Spiritualizing our condition, spiritualizing our situation, spiritualizing our circumstances, instead of searching out the matter. That's why they, they, that's why they spiritualize sex. And most of us believe that. Oh, be careful who you have sex with. It's a spiritual thing. When you have sex with them, it affects you. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. Sex is a natural thing. It's not a spiritual thing. Oh, there's somebody when you have sex with them, it's a lie. And that's the nonsense they bring. Oh, if you are struggling in life, you are not making it. Get married. When you get married, the door will open. It's a lie. If you don't do the right thing, the, that, it will not happen. It's when you do the right thing, that thing will happen. You see some people struggling somewhere because they are doing the wrong thing. Get out from there. It's not a must you do that thing. Some of you are there because you are competing with others. Or you want to be like somebody, it's not yourself. Maybe you're supposed to be a farmer. No, but you want to be an engineer. Okay, go, go there and you see how you'll be suffering. You're supposed to be a doctor. No, I want to be this. You're supposed to be a bricklayer. No, I want to be a doctor. Then you say it's a spiritual thing. I problem. I don't know somebody is somewhere remotely controlling. No, it's not. It's like a, now I'm living in America and somebody believed that somebody somewhere in Africa is engineering anything for me. No, you are stupid. Where was that person before I came to America? You know, you know how I came to America? I did not come to America by miracle. No, I submitted the papers. <laughs> we went through what we're supposed to go through to be here. We went for the interview. Where were they? Then. How about our women, especially our women? They are, the one, they are the most one in this spiritual nonsense. And that's why they are using them. If you go to spirituality, they are using our women. You go to religion, they are using our women. And these two things subjugated women. Spirituality, no. In spirituality, you see a man. If you sleep with a woman, maybe your medicine will not work or that thing, you will not be able to. The, the moment you're doing this, don't touch any woman, including your wife. That's evil. That's nonsense. Anything that is that separates man and the woman is evil. It's evil. It's against nature. You see our women so ignorant, they believe there is God. This God don't want you. This God is a he. Everything about him, he. He's choosing he is. Every woman that are claiming to be women of God today, they are forcing themselves because of the new wave that came in. Very soon, Catholic Church will begin to ordain female priests. And you see many female 
becoming priests, become. <laughs> but now it's only Pentecostals that are doing it. They have female pastors. But Anglican Church, I think Anglican Church have female bishop now, right? Yeah, I think. So it's only Catholic Church that still stand the ground with the band because Catholic, Roman Catholic Church is the mother of Christianity. The fifth one, I can say, not learning from our past mistakes. That's another huge one. Africans. And this thing I'm going to say now, it affects every African revolutionary, uh, revolutionary list, uh, uh, those ones we call Af for freedom fighters in Africa. They keep repeating the mistakes of the past revolutionary list and the Af freedom fighters. They keep making the same mistake. And I want to state it again. You're talking about revolution in Africa. You have a movement, organization, championing this. Say you're fighting for the freedom of your people or fighting for revolution. May you're supposed to know you don't trust anybody, including your wife, including your children, including your family members, your mother, your father. No. I tell you, Jesus was a figure or symbol of a savior they give to us for you to do you want to be a savior no you don't you don't acknowledge your parents you don't acknowledge your siblings you don't have no brother no friend you know what jesus said to his disciple all of you will leave me he didn't trust any of his disciple even when peter said no i will keep my i will keep i will not i will i will i will not die i will never deny you he said to him three times, <laughs> when the, before the, the distant crowd three times, you will deny me. Then he said, no, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm alone, I'm not alone. My father is always with me, which is also a lie. God was not with him. Then when he was on that cross, God abandoned him. He cried, my God, my God, why has you forsaken me? Let us learn from our past mistake. See the leader of IPOB, Mazin Man, the Colonel. I listened to a video a lady made, that fair lady that I always talk about Biafra, talking about people should mark them. I said, that's bullshit. I commented there, I said, you guys are not serious. You are talking about, you are blaming people that sold Mars and the Kano. Where is the Elohim to quick of the premier God of Israel that he is still praying to? Where was that God before he was abducted? And where is that God now? It's, it's about seven months now. They are still holding him. Then one day now, maybe something will happen. They let him go. They say, it is God. God has, and you see him also saying the same thing is God. No! Learn from your past mistakes. What was he doing in Kenya? When they, I, bet, I, I, I don't abide that they are bullshit. They say he went to Kenya. For what? With what he used to speak about Africa. You can speak against Africa and go to Africa. You say African black people, oh, how we wish you will never be a black man in your next life. You don't want to be a black person. And you went to Kenya for what? <laughs> for what? You are being abroad where you can have whatever you want. What was he doing in Kenya? He said, none of your business. Then it's none of your business that are holding him. But you should learn. If you are African and you're fighting for revolution, you're fighting for freedom, you have a group of people following you, how sophisticated are your weapons, your network? And are you fortified? You must be fortified with voodoo power. Yeah, voodoo power. So you hear me? Voodoo power. You must fortify with that also, including with weapons. You say, no, you don't know. Okay, see now. What will happen to you? You say, you, you, which weapon will you buy? They, they cannot buy. And the voodoo you are talking about, they're also in, into it. So why why can't you have it? At least it's better though. It's just like people that are kicking against vaccine. Vaccine is not if vaccine is not cured. It's like you having your own weapon. That doesn't mean you cannot be killed. That doesn't mean you cannot get COVID nineteen. But at least you have with weapon to fight. You have advantage than those that don't have.
How can you see somebody that trusted, uh, saying he trusted his inner carcass of people with him, then he was bragging that God is God sent him, God is with him. There's nothing any mortal person can do to him. They arrested him. And they say, okay, you know, you know, person that sold him, they, maybe they tried that deal. You know, I, we say him, but you guys will not kill him. If they kill him as in now, they can today. Nothing will happen. Except a few people make protests around and they kill some people again. He dies there. You know how many people they have been killing? You know what make uh, 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 Odume run away? His own people, his own colleagues, they say, man, go, because he know they will kill him. They say, go. As they will say, he that fight and run away, he used to fight another day. But why are, are we, we keep running away? When we can learn the, the underground games, that's how white people, that's how you see them operate. You see how, 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 how Putin is holding NATO, America, by the balls. He got weapon. He know what he know. He got people also supporting him, like China. Imagine if Putin is a one president in Africa. They will just use AK, uh, is it AK forty seven or is it there's this uh, SR or something? They go, pa, pa, pa. See how they kill uh, Maman Gaddafi. See how they kill uh, Saddam Hussein. Because they run their mouth, but they're not well equipped. Before you run your mouth, say you are you are you are leading a, um, um, a group of people now, you call it a movement. You have to be well equipped. How can you go to war against a army of a, a well-trained army, a well-equipped army with sticks? Say you're fighting the, uh, with them with your sticks. One bomb, last of all of you, don't burn it. It's time we wake up. These things, pleasurizing things, make us begin to go for power without tangible proof. When you talk about Odeshi, that's voodoo or others, people think it's about uh, this nonsense. People are doing fake things. No, there is that power. The people are not getting to know about it well and the people that are using it are not even using it well why can't africa use that power to deal with white people because we are still slaves the ability to disappear and that as you are standing here nobody sees you it's our power it's voodoo power it's not evil power that's person that's spirit but they specialize everything you're thinking of there is power of untouchable. You come into a desert, and you're, oh, <laughs> it's no longer here. But how can you brag? You have a she Nothing will happen to you. You know, if you before you go, you will disappear. You're untouchable. But you are now locked up. You are arrested, abducted. It is time we wake up, Africans. Stop basing your life on testimonies you cannot verify or you have not verified. Anything that is happening to you happens to everyone. So learn from them and live your life. Accordingly.